Hey everybody, this is Ed from the Whiskey Tangent Podcast, and we're here with another Whiskey Short. I'm here with Scott. Hey everybody. And Anders is joining us. Howdy. And we have a very, very interesting and a unique lineup for today's short. Scott, give us an overview. Okay, so we had a listener request that we do something in the area of mocktails. So because this isn't really uh, whiskey, but would be released one day before October, we're going to do a bonus short of mocktails for sober October. Ah, bonus short. And so I looked up a bunch of recipes online and a lot of them had an interesting ingredient to substitute for your whiskey. And that was tea. Yeah, that, that's where I went to as well in my mind when I started thinking, what could you have that could have enough fortification, if you will, and body to be in a drink? Yeah, and it's got some tannic qualities and some smokiness, and there's so many types of tea. So what we did here is uh, blended a few together, and we'll talk about the different teas that are being blended together in these drinks. Secondarily, we also have, as a taste comparison with this, <laughs> a, a manufactured product, a faux whiskey, basically, that Anders picked up. Yeah, it's called Ritual, Zero Proof Whiskey Alternative. CNN says, it tastes like the real thing, especially in a mixed drink. Yeah. Uh, we will be the judge of that here right. today. Right, does it? Yeah, I guess we'll find yeah, out. It, uh, we just cracked the bottle. Yeah, the label looks pretty enticing. If you go by what they say, it's American oak, and Madagascar vanilla, Caspican. Cas Cap Caspican. Capsicum. Fruit. Sugar floss. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, the bane of Dennis everywhere. <laughs> yeah, definitely not a <laughs> sugar floss. Damn you! <laughs> and then some mesquite smoke, mm. warm caramel, stone fruit, black peppercorn, prickly ash. You can, mm. Scott can be a prickly ash if you wake him up too quick. <laughs> 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 and a toasted spices. Uh, on the back, they, this is my favorite part. They go, all the oak, vanilla, caramel, and so warming heat of whiskey without the alcohol or calories. Mm. So whether you're driving, dieting, training, making a baby, staying up late, <laughs> getting up early, or just have shit to do and the shit's blocked out, but that's what they mean, you can still enjoy a great cocktail blended mm. from all natural botanicals, good for six months after opening. No refrigeration required, but don't freeze it. Mm. Finally, best in joining cocktails, substitute one for one with your favorite whiskey. Well, we're not going to join cocktails first. We're going to take a shot of it yeah. to see what it tastes like. This is exactly what they tell us not to do. They're like, it's better if you kind of blend it in with other stuff. <laughs> We're going to see, though. Yeah, let's find out. So on the nose, it's it's eventful. It's, <laughs> that's a kind way of putting it. It's weird. This smells weird. Yeah, I, mean, I, I get the mesquite out of it. Yeah. Uh, pretty up front. Very, yeah, the sm like all smoke tends to be. It's, it's definitely, there's vanilla in there. I taste vanilla, but it's wiped out by a whole lot of other things that could be botanicals or it could be like a, a dumpster fire. It yeah. sounds like a smoky red licorice. Or like electrical fire. Like there's something like yeah, la like, latexy. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm getting some of the, the capsicum from it. Um, oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Just like this little note of pepper. Almost like white pepper on the nose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's taste it. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> hey, it's it's in your it's in your throat like it's it, oh yeah the, it just it did not she go said. Away. It, <laughs> <laughs> it did not go away it's right there in the back of your throat it's pepper burning it's like yeah. spicy yeah. burning and there's definitely smoke it's not as bad as i first thought it was when i drank it it, it finishes a little bit more civilized it definitely tastes better than it smells wow mm. it's it, almost like a smoky arnold palmer it's a little yeah. watered down yeah. with a cayenne pepper. like Cayenne a, pepper is what I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, it's cayenne really peppery. or maybe even like a chipotle pepper yeah, comes into it. Yeah, my whole mouth and throat uh, is burning. Yeah. So it's, That's it's, what people has, who don't drink feel like. It has a finish, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I do see, though, that if this is in a drink and mm. you kind of like mask some of the bad flavors and still keep the density of it, yeah. I can see how this can work. So we have an old-fashioned made with it that Anders put together. And, and what did you put in there, Anders? Um, so it's going to have this uh, ritual whiskey alternative. With a little bit of simple syrup through in some Angostura bitters. My philosophy on that, you could argue that there's alcohol in it. Right, um, right. But so do most like extracts that you put in cooking. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also a little bit of vanilla extract in the old fashioned as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, stirred it. No ice. 
One other thing, this is super light bodied as well, like yeah. aggressively light bodied. Yeah, it tastes yeah. like a tea almost. <laughs> yeah. Right, it does. The pepper is what gives it its density because mm. it is a very thin beverage. Mm. So I made the same drink right. using a mix of a barley tea and Earl Grey. All right. Did you have vanilla in there as well? Yes, okay. everything else is the same. All right, so since we just tasted the whiskey alternative, let's try the one that has the ritual whiskey alternative in it, zero proof. Sure. It smells good. It orange, smells nice. yeah. orange rind. Yeah, an orange peel garnish. Huh. Hmm. That's not bad. Um, I feel like I'm having a cocktail. I'm glad the simple syrup is in there to counteract the pepper because it's still the pepper is still all over the back of my throat. <laughs> but yeah, I can't say this is a fail. No, it's very decent. Yeah. So this is a a, a faux old fashioned, a fold yeah. fashion, if you will. Yeah. Mm. Man, I haven't had a old-fashioned in a long time uh-huh. uh but mm, it's too. it's got that sweetness in it yes uh, we should mention that anders is in the middle of a 75 day a 75 pause hard, on alcohol uh, yeah uh so i'm on day 10 no, oh wow so 65 days to go so he's actually enjoying um, this cocktail he if, needed this cocktail yeah, right here yeah. if you guys are following along check me out on the week of uh, november 16th uh, mm-hmm. that's when i'm free right uh, and he'll be on in December with us. Yes. We've pushed our Anders plans back to accommodate this. Yeah. Yeah. So Anders, what do you what do you think yeah. about this? Um so Is it comparable to is an it, old fashioned? Well, a little bit. Is it better than no old fashioned? And now that you've yes. tasted it, can, it is absolutely better than no old fashioned. Yeah. Um it almost feels like so vegetarian meats. Yeah, right. I'm getting that kind of vibe. Uh, <laughs> some of them are better than others. Yeah. Um, I actually just had some impossible meat. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Shout out to the Morningstar sausage crumble. That stuff's delicious. Uh, but it kind of feels like that where I'm like, but you know it's, what I really want. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But do you think now that you've tasted it in a drink that you can do better with it? Like yes, now, absolutely. Right. Now you know, like, okay, I see what I can do to make a better cocktail, which is what I want to hear from him, because I think he's going to take this bottle home and, and science the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and what do you pay for this on Amazon? Uh, it was under $30, uh, like maybe 25 to 28 So if you're doing Sober October, this is not a bad thing to pick up and play with if you're looking for cocktail relief. Now I mean, let's try with the tea, though, to see maybe what Scott's yeah. put together will say, no, you really don't need to get that because we have the tea. Right. Barley mm. tea. So I put a barley tea bag in an Earl Grey tea bag in a little mason jar and dumped some boiling water over it. <laughs> it was quite easy. Oh, it's delightful. That's most of my job, actually. I wonder. <laughs> hmm. I wonder. Oh, well, that's interesting. It's sweeter for uh, it somehow. It is very sweet. It doesn't have the peppery backlash. Uh-uh. So now... Take a little bit of your whiskey alternate that you have and dump it into Scott's drink. Like I just did. I took one sip of yours and I was like, it's just too sweet. It like, mm. goes, it's just like drinking sugar. Yeah, it's very now, sweet. Now add this to the tea and I think that we've come a step closer to what we're looking for. Mm, right. So basically we're doing a infinity bottle. <laughs> An infinity cocktail. Okay, that's the? together. Yeah. Together. Pretty tasty. Yeah. yeah, that's not bad because the one that Anders made didn't taste like an old fashioned, but it was more balanced than the one that I made because it was too sweet. Right. But now putting them together, uh, it still doesn't taste like an old fashioned necessarily, no. but it's quite a nice cocktail. It is. The tea adds a dimension that the whiskey doesn't have. Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking just from tasting this and looking at the ingredients ingredients on the ritual um i really like the direction that they went in um one thing that should be pointed out we didn't stir the cocktails over ice which yeah is definitely going to be a big factor but with that capsicum that like peppery yeah, element yeah, yeah. i feel like there's too much of that and there's a lot of good funk from the barley and uh, a lot of good tannins and stuff like yeah. that the earl gray is going to have a little bit of citrus and bergamot I think, right yeah. it's very citrusy yeah uh one one of these days i'm going to become like a food scientist chemical yeah. engineer yeah yeah but i because that's what it is right, right? Uh, it's yeah. all food sciences would yeah. probably go so i think we quickly shifted gears in the middle of this tasting and, re- <laughs> <laughs> and realized that you know what both drinks have something to offer but not great but together they're a much better cocktail so yeah yeah so we're gonna make uh two more cocktails right mm-hmm. the next up i think is uh a sham hatton all right, right. So okay. let's do it Oh, 
Okay, so we're back, and uh, Anders and I have made the drinks again. Anders making the Shamhattan, as I'm calling it, mm. uh, with the Ritual Whiskey Alternative, and me with a different tea blend this time, uh, still with Earl Grey, but also with Lapsang Sao Chong, which is a really smoky tea. Yeah. We're going to do Anders first with the Alternative right. Whiskey. You can really smell it coming through the drink. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, we use, we should say, uh, as the vermouth alternative, cranberry juice and simple syrup, half an ounce of each. Which actually works surprisingly well in this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That pepper from the yeah. whiskey alternative is mm. so present on this, and it's giving it a strange finish. Yeah. You get that pepper and a little bit of the acidity from the cranberries as well. So it's like peppery cranberry at the end. Yeah. What's kind of interesting. What's cool about this one is it actually looks like a Manhattan. It like does. The, the color is perfect. Mm. Whereas I think on the old fashioned, it didn't really make. Yeah. Yeah. Because old fashioned is supposed to be a little it's, bit lighter. Um, I think I like this a little bit <laughs> better than the old fashioned. It's not as sweet. And so I'm tasting more flavors. But I think that this would benefit from some tea again. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I'd be interesting to see how smoky it gets if you added some of this tea blend here because the lapsing is like super smoky. Well, that's what's coming in, in yeah. Scotch, right? So Yeah, yeah. Earl Grey and lapsang, uh, right. equal parts of each. It might be a little bit too smoky as, as I'm thinking and smelling it. Mm. Smells Could really you, nice. Because you, oh. you can smell the smoke. Mm. Yeah. This it's is good. Th- it's, but I think the smokiness makes me not think Manhattan at all. Yeah. Right. It's, it's more, more like, like a Rob a, Roy. I was just going <laughs> to say that. Yeah. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> you did. Yes. It's, you, you, actually, Scott, yours is much more like a Rob Roy. It's a great call, Anders. Mm. And, Scott. and Scott. Right. So uh, you could tamp down the Lapsang tea if you wanted a Manhattan, but you could bring it up a little bit more if you wanted to make a Rob Roy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, I've combined both drinks together. Okay. Because <laughs> I, once again, think since all the ingredients are the same except for the tea. True. And the whiskey alternative. Time. Yeah. Yeah, to see if once again, if we've stumbled upon the magic ingredient. I mean, I'm glad I'm drinking more of it. It's pretty. It's pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. It's pretty good together. <laughs> the tea seems to yeah. bolster up the whiskey alternative in a way that they complement each other's faults, if you will. They fill in each other's blanks. Yeah, wow, this works really well yeah, together. I'm really impressed with this. I'll say it is a little bit on the sweet side. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't know how you escape that when you're doing a cocktail with this because all the recipes that I saw that didn't have tea in it were really just fruit juice and sugar and stuff. Yeah. And it's like that's not even going to become close to approximating what you're trying to make. It's just going to make uh, like Kool Aid. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, traditionally in making mocktails, it is so much easier to fake like a pina colada than it yeah. is oh, to right, fake yeah, an right, old right. fashioned or a Manhattan. Like that's, that's absolutely. Step one. Yeah. Um, you could always just simply add more bitters. Yeah. Uh, that's one way to do it. You could add... A little more cranberry. Yeah. A little, cranberry, uh, a little sweet, bit though. more cranberry. Oh, cranberry concentrate. You know, they sell them. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. You add it to water and make bigger batches of cranberry juice. Yes. Yeah. Something a little bit more intensely yeah. Um, sour. Yeah. If you want to get it you're really wild, you could just uh, combine citric acid and water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tonic might be a, a way to, 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 yeah. to get through um, Sober October, too. Yeah. Especially uh, with your Not fizzy drink. Way. Yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but uh, I was talking about citrus. So the next drink we're going to make, and maybe we just, because we've proven, I think, that splitting the tea and the whiskey alternative is really the solution to a better drink. Let's just make one version yes. of the next drink, which is going to be a riff on the whiskey sour. Right. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a break and make the last one. And then I'm going to start drinking whiskey today. So. <laughs> Yeah. We decided that I couldn't drink it until I went through all the mocktails because they're right. It's like when you have like low fat ice cream, you just don't have Ben and Jerry's first and it'll taste okay. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Be right back. So we're back. We have made, what are we calling the version of the whiskey sour? I called it the Trixie sour. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to figure out like all fair, like this is the first time we've ever not drank on an episode of the podcast. We're like, are we still funny or, <laughs> or do we think we're doing good? But it sounds like this, like, so what we're doing today is <laughs> it's like NPR. 
we have <laughs> non-alcohol for you. So. Like, it, like when we're drinking, we think we're Janis Joplin. <laughs> right. We wake up and we realize we're Yoko Ono. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Trixie uh, Sour here. Trixie it's, Sour, What's yeah. in there? Let's talk about it real quick. So. Yeah. So we did a split base with the, uh, the Ritual Whiskey Alternative and then a half and half blend of Lapsang and Barley Tea that Scott elegantly produced for us. <laughs> Probably about a half ounce of lemon each and then half an ounce of simple syrup as well. Give that a quick stir all together and then top it off with a thin slice of lemon peel. Mm. Very citrusy on the nose. Yeah, it smells great. Mm. You get that barley funk and that smoke. A little bit, yeah. It's like a, a lemon candy with an undertone See, of something. <laughs> this is different. I just tasted it. Um, mm. All the flavors from the whiskey alternative come through and tea. There's mm-hmm. the pepper. There's the smoke from the tea. Mm-hmm. And then the citrus wipes it away and leaves you with a nice lemony finish, which you'd want on a whiskey sour. Yeah. yeah. So you're not left with any of the troubling flavors <laughs> that troubling. lingered at some of the other ones, like the too much smoke from the tea or too much from the whiskey alternative. Here, they're all there, and you'd process them. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, look, smoke. Oh, uh-huh. some pepper. And then, boom, lemon. Yeah, that, I think this works the best out of all of the cocktails. Yes. Tiny bit of bitterness at the end. It balances yeah. everything out. It's, it's it's quite nice. It is really <laughs> The best experience of the night, the uh, the Trixie Sour is definitely the winner. And I guess we're going to put all these recipes in the comments. Yeah, yeah, in the description. And that's what I mean, the yes. description, right. And yeah. uh, I think it's important to also go through the ritual of making the cocktail. I wonder why they, if they named it ritual on yeah. purpose. Because if you make it with the shaker and the stirring and you're cutting yeah. a garnish on it and everything, that kind of gets you in the mood like, oh, I am making a cocktail. And then when you taste it, you're, you're drinking it at a nice glass and you're yep. doing the whole you know thing that you normally would do with yeah. a regular cocktail. Absolutely. Right. I think that's important. It feels more like a cocktail because, I mean, with the ingredients altogether, it could just taste like an Arnold Palmer. But it has more of that complexity and just kind of what I want in a whiskey salad. Hour, so yeah it's got some depth to it mm-hmm. which maybe the other ones didn't quite have Reach you. yeah all right well final thoughts if you're gonna take the month of october off drinking i, I question that already um <laughs> <laughs> but we decided to humor our viewers who asked us to help them through it so for those people looking to do a sober october or a fabulous february or a dry oh, august oh, right, a dry <laughs> a hot dry august <laughs> we've given you a couple ways to start it and uh yeah we're gonna get off here and go do a short where i can drink whiskey right one thing i do want to say that somebody sent us a link to this ritual whiskey like mm. two or three weeks ago on facebook uh. and i answered it by basically all caps oh my god what is this abomination and i was trying <laughs> to be funny but then they didn't never responded to it so i don't know if they got the answer that they wanted to or if i yelled at them and now they don't like us anymore wow. so great his name was scott so scott i'm very sorry great name <laughs> and great name are you a lord <laughs> scott i don't know i am Yes. The <laughs> ghost says, are you a god? <laughs> no. And then she blows him off the door. And like, <laughs> then die. <laughs> if somebody asks you if you're a god, say yes. <laughs> All right, everybody. Yep. Um, enjoy your sober October if you're doing it. If not, I always say just drink Irish whiskey. That's only 80 proof. That's like cutting down, right? Right. Like Scott will tell you, like, I'll go out to watch football. My friends, I'm like, well, I'm just going to bring Tullum or do over. That's like not drinking. Yeah. Really. It's only 80 proof. It's like taking it easy for the night. Right. It's like broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> ah. All right, everybody. For the Whiskey Tangent Podcast, I'm Ed. I'm Scott. I'm Anders. Later. Later.